Okay, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have an update. Uh, when you guys, when you're putting the bell crank back in these things, um, so I've tried the Vitavon, and this is the Ecotech, as I'd mentioned in my other videos. <sighs> what I have found is you got to install a nut. If you see right here, uh, I'm trying to do this here. A nut on top of this cross brace where the the bell crank arm front arm comes up this is the driver's side and the parts don't come with the nut you just screw it shows a screw coming in from the bottom and then there's a bearing and a crush sleeve and then another bearing and it just throws shows the screw stops right at the top of this cross brace word of advice for longevity longevity of these parts Put Loctite, don't over tighten it. When you get the, the, the screw where you want it, where it still swivels freely from the cross brace, which connects to the tie rods and then to the bell crank here, put a nut on the top, put a lock nut. And it has to be a shallow lock nut, otherwise it's gonna hit the damn tr front transmission housing or the drive line. Put a small lock nut right here, and it, it will clear. If I had three hands, I could move it and show you, but you got to do this. That that screw right there will loosen and ruin your, your, your bell crank. It'll ruin the cross brace. It'll wallow out that hole. Um, I had so much Loctite on it, and it backed out, and that's why it was loose. Um, this, I found the solution. I got to put it back together. I put a, a small tiny washer on the top and a small tiny washer on the bottom and that secured this the bell crank on the upper and lower steering bell the bell crank stabilizers that's what these are called the top and the bottom there, there's play in here and I don't know why it, it moves up and down just a little bit that will cause these parts to wear out and it's just a, a ugly chain effect that will happen um, I compared it to my Vitavon, and it's the same way. It, it, it's a, there's just a tiny bit where it moves up and down. So put a tiny washer on the top and a tiny washer on the bottom, and then cinch down your top plate, and it's absolutely perfect. Um, now, I say this now, but after I get it all together, I'll have to do some test runs and see how it all goes. But I don't know, man. This just steering system is just underbuilt for this truck. It's just too small, too weak. The parts are too small for what we're using these trucks for. Bad, shame on you, Losi, but whatever. We're doing the best we can. But make sure you put that nut on there so that this threaded screw doesn't back back out. Because it will. And then this will loosen up and wallow everything out. So after I get everything back together, um, I'll do some test drives. It might be a week or two. I work a lot of hours, and I barely ever get time to work on this thing. This thing has consumed so much of my time, and I'm just about over it. Um, I've replaced and upgraded the motor to a sensored brushless system, a Castle 3200. And oh my God, it is it's just fucking awesome. No more cogging. And I've upgraded my steering servo. It's got a Spectrum S6280, just works absolutely flawless, so much power, no more steering, low steering. I mean, the gears in there are all the metal and all that crap. It's a, you know, it's a $150 piece. So I upgraded the motor um, to the Castle ESC. It's, it was a combo kit and it is worth the, the money. Get rid of that crappy 3100. Um, uh, uh, sensor less brush system it's just crap get rid of it it's worth the 250 bucks to put the the censored motor in it um anyway so i'm gonna get my steering all back together and hopefully test run it uh next weekend or it's probably gonna be next weekend and i'll let you guys know how all this turns out but um anyways that's it for now